Hello, welcome to BioGrade TV. If you are new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. The Rise and Fall of Al Bashir of Sudan Africa, in the past six decades, have encountered some generations of undemocratic leaders. Some of these leaders have risen to the palace of power and became a thorn in the flesh of their own people. Idi Amin of Uganda and Sani Abacha of Nigeria are names that won't be forgotten in a while. Sudan isn't spared either. Omar Hassan Hamad Abashir was president of Sudan between 1989 and 2009 before his government was overthrown by the military in a coup. Omar Abashir was born into a peasant family. He and his family moved to the country's capital, Khartoum. He joined the army after his secondary school education. He studied at a military college in Egypt and fought for the Egyptian army against Israel in 1973. He achieved promotion within the army quickly and took the leading role in the Sudanese army's campaign against the rebels of the Southern Sudan People's Liberation Army SPLA, in 1980. In 1989, Abashir led a successful coup and became the country's leader and chairman of the Revolutionary Command Council for National Salvation. He then ran a fascist government, dissolved the parliament, banned political parties and controlled the press. He was totally supported by Hassan Al-Turabi, leader of the National Islamic Front NIF. They worked towards the complete Islamization of Sudan and introduced Sharia law to the country in March 1991. Omar al-Bashir became president of Sudan after the Revolutionary Command Council for National Salvation was disbanded in 1993. He was confirmed as president by an election held in 1996. On June 30, 1998, Bashir signed a new constitution which lifted the ban he had placed on political parties. He later used the military against the president of the National Assembly after suspecting a plot against him. On March 12, year 2000, Al Bashir declared a three month state of emergency, which he thereafter extended indefinitely. After the year 2000 elections, he was once again confirmed as the president from then on. He dismissed the cabinet he worked with and took consent from no one. There was a civil war in Sudan for many years and the conflict with the SPLA continued. Displacing millions of southerners, Al Bashir later agreed in 2005 to form a peace pact after coming under a lot of pressure from the international community. In August 2003, some African groups in Darfur launched an attack on Al Bashir's government because of alleged unfair treatment. To combat the uprising, the president enlisted an Arab militia known as Janjweed. Al Bashir used the Janjweed, whose brutal methods terrorized the civilians in the region, prevented international aid organizations from delivering much needed food and medical supplies, and displaced more than 2 million people. On the 14th of July 2008, the International Criminal Court ICC, called for an arrest warrant to be issued against President Omar al Bashir. He was accused of crimes against humanity, war crimes, and genocide in Darfur. The Sudanese government denied the charges against the president and stated that Bashir was innocent of such crimes. On March 4, 2009, the ICC issued an arrest warrant on Omar al Bashir on charges of war crimes and crimes against humanity, but not with genocide until July 2010 when the ICC issued a second arrest warrant charging al Bashir with genocide. His case was halted when the ICC decided to stop the investigation of the case in 2014 because of lack of action by the United Nations Security Council in compelling him to appear in court. Al Bashir retired from his position as commander of the armed forces in 2010, the post that he held since 1989 coup. He did so to comply with legal requirements regarding candidate eligibility so that he would be able to participate in the then presidential election. He was re-elected in April 2010 following withdrawal of his two main opposition candidates during the election who alleged that there were already indications of fraud.
The 2015 election saw Abashir as the National Congress Party's presidential candidate once again. He easily won re-election after many opposition candidates boycotted. With the official result showing that he received about 94% of the votes. The election had low vote turnout even though electoral officials extended voting by an extra day. The president was confronted by strong and more vocal critics. He faced an unprecedented level of popular unrest that began in December 2018 and continued into 2019. The protesters and opposition leaders called for the president to step down. Omar al-Bashir continued to refuse the demands of nationwide demonstrations and insisted that he would leave only if he was voted out of the office. One of the largest protests on the African continent took place on the 6th of April 2019 as demonstrators marched to the military headquarters in the capital and remained there for the next few days. On April 11, 2019, Bashir was overthrown in a military coup and placed under arrest. Sudanese men and women celebrating a successful military coup displayed on television was a scene which left many with mixed feelings about the future of Sudan. But one thing is for sure, one of the nation's nightmare is finally over. What have we missed out of this history? Let us know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.